Hello, and welcome back to the next episode of our factory building experience. Um, so, I said in the last episode I was going to carry on and talk about the mine. I kind of am, but not directly. Um, we're now going to create um, a sort of container for the miner now it's not necessarily going to be just for the miner so we're going to try and think as openly as possible um it's going to be for any type of resource connected to any type of object so it could even be the base object for a storage container um of some sort so what i'm going to do i'm going to do what i did with the tools now this is going to be um an actor component so this actor component can be reused on any object so there could be more than one there could be quite a few so what we need is to create a new actor component so where could i create this um i'll create it in the base classes here okay so we we'll create a new uh blueprint class and it's going to be an actor component and we're going to call this uh, bp a c bp actor component um or did I call, uh, bpc is what i use underscore and we'll say resource store okay so let's bring this in and for some reason it jumps to there okay let's get rid of the generator we don't need that open i'll leave the first person character open but i don't think i'll need it okay so what does our resource store need to know so it needs to be able to store items now each resource store is only going to be allowed to carry one type of item we can't mix items um so we need to know a resource type and we already created a type here didn't we so this is going to be a resource type here let's make it visible for now um, expose and spawn because we need to set that on spawn okay so we've got our three different things in there so what else do we need to know um, we need to know maximum storage or oh, store gap storage and this will be a float variable Pardon, save that and then we add on also the current storage okay now this is going to be quite simple as you can see so let's just set the default maximum storage to say um as this is going to be used on machines and storages let's talk about machines how much you know how many kilos i would say probably about a ton so a thousand kilos in weight can be stored in the maximum storage okay now we're going to need a few things in here so what's going to happen is we need to be able to empty that storage out if um we change something in the storage type now there's two ways to do it we can either wait till it's empty which is going to have some way of emptying anyway um but we also want to be able to flush it um maybe initially maybe not so much in the game maybe we'll just force them that they've got to empty it in some way but um but if there's yeah bit conflicted on that one now thinking about it whether to have a flush or not but obviously we need now a way to take items from the storage yeah so how do we do this so we'll create events for these so we'll go custom event add custom event and this one's going to call take um quantity mm, the want of a better no i don't like that at all take quantity um take resource and the next one's going to be is a new custom event 
That's going to be called give resource. Okay. I'm not sure whether to use functions on these yet because I, I, I might want some return some return nodes to say oh sorry no it's full so it might not be events yet we'll see we'll see so okay an actor is going to ask for resources and an actor is going to give resources now how are we going to connect those um do we just have a pure actor in there um we could do couldn't we just for now so uh, let's think how this will work um bp oh no not bp Co connected actors now all actors are going to be based from our building base even if they're things like conveyor belts tubes that sort of thing as well as well as other buildings it's all going to come from that base so we're going to use bp underscore oh not nilding it's building there we go and this is going to be a very uh, a, an array yep of connected right so when actors are connected they will be added into this array okay so what we're going to do is take resource is going to be operated on by um questing ooh questing actor and it's going to be um, the same type BP building base yep so the question actor then it's going to be request quantity let's change that to just request actor yeah request actor request quantity kind of makes sense and it's going to be a float um yeah i think yeah no these are going to have to be functions they are aren't they um convert event to function there we go right yeah it's going to have to be that way so take resource okay let's go inside that's because we do need to give um a return value of how much has been taken right so first thing we want to check is the actor valid yeah so although that should be i would guess whatever it's called and uh, let's get rid of this here we don't want this in here yeah so whenever it's called i think the actor is going to request it it should be valid it's just no reason it shouldn't be valid because it's requesting it so that's fine what we need to do is check no not set we need to check the current storage so get current storage compare with the float so let's bring that over there so we want to check the current storage with what's In the storage already so if there's more or equal to we can take it if it's less we can only send through uh, what's left okay so in here we'll have a local variable called return quantity and that is going to be a value of a float so we want to set that here and there so both if there's more or they're equal to we can take what they want and the return quantity why is that oh that is not an array it's a single so let's go on that so the return quantity is going to be 
the requested quantity yeah so if we just get the request quantity because it just extends off there as if it was a variable and we'll just return it okay then what we need to calculate is if it's less than the amount Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's equal or whatever. If it's less than the amount than what we've got in stock, we can only return what's left. So we need to do another check here. Um, maybe we should do the check before. Yeah, we'll do the check before. So here, we're going to do another compare. Oh, always does that. You'd think that a standard compare would come up first, not some image right with the request quantity um input and compare it with zero. Oh no we're not quite doing that are we we're checking if the current storage is zero if it's equal to zero then we're going to return nothing yeah so we're going to set it to zero um if it's larger than nothing we do that it should never be less we're not going to set that it should never ever be less but we're going to do that okay right let me go ahead and wrap around this now so let's just bring this down so we can see it a little better there we go so we've checked to see if there's more than zero in there yeah so if there's more than zero we can do some work on it if there isn't we're just going to return that as zero yeah i've connected the lesson it should never be less than we're going to make sure of that okay so if there's more or equal to the amount we want we're going to send the amount we want then what we need to do is we need to set the current storage to a get current storage and we'll put that above because it's going to be subtract down again so we're going to take away how much we're sending from the current storage yep it should never go below zero so there shouldn't be an issue here if we're turning zero we don't need to set the current storage or anything okay so all we do then is we need to set a return node so click on here and we're on output of output quantity and we'll bring that right to the end here and we we'll link that to there and we we'll also link this to there right so now we've got how much it can take if it's equal or larger than what's in the storage we send what they wanted yeah so the return node will be return quantity yeah so there's return quantity and we've set that here but we've also set it here when there's nothing left anyway okay so we just ignore and set return quantity as zero but what if there's they want more but there is some in there but it's less which is this pin okay so we'll come down and we will um just set that so let's set return quantity to our current storage quantity yeah so everything in storage is going to go so say they ask for five 
there's only one it's going to return the one but then it's going to set the current storage again to um well we might as well just set it to zero mightn't we as as it's no no longer used so again we just output that back up there so let's let's start doing some comments okay so that we know what we're doing so this one right click checks we have more than zero uh, resources okay bring that down and bring that one in line with that one it's just set your first node shift select the second node and press Q just lines it up if you didn't know I think most of you probably would and here this one says return nothing as there is no resource okay so we know what that piece does this one now will come down a bit this is a group of stuff so we're going to put a, a full comment on this and this is going to return the remaining storage and set storage to zero so this here is check we have enough resource to send yeah so this checks we have enough so this says have we got any resources if not return nothing as there is no resource yeah so we're setting the return quantity and we're sending that back yeah and that would be if it's equal or less to but the less to should never ever trigger because we're setting it to zero here okay and if this is equal or larger to so if they exact it say one five and there is five this will also set it to zero because we're deducting it from the storage yeah so we check it if there's not enough we return what is there and reset the storage to zero yeah okay so this one here let's make some more room for this let's bring that across so we can do a, a comment on it so this one um gets requested um quantity and adjust resource storage count by deducting No, that's that's just completely backwards <laughs> sends requested quantity and deducts it from storage quantity that's better a bit better english that one so as it goes we check if it's not zero yeah if it is we send back nothing we haven't got to change anything because there's a zero in there okay if if there is equal to what they want or more then we go on so if there is more than zero we then go to check to see if they've got enough to send okay if there's enough to send so that means we've got the exact same amount or we've got more we send them what they want okay so we set the return quantity to whatever what they want and then we take that away from the storage and then reset the storage to the new value deducting what they've taken and then it returns the return value but if we don't have enough they want five but we only have two we will send them two and then set the storage to zero because there's nothing left 
Okay, so zero. Um, the storage should never go below zero. So I could actually remove that because they can't go below zero. Equal will automatically zero out. Plus will automatically be just reduced by the amount requested. And this one automatically sets it to zero. So there's nothing there. So now this will request. Um, this will request what's uh what 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 like so this will request items from the storage and adjust the storage um appropriately now what we now need is one to give resources so new function give resource right now do we return the resource type um Ooh. Okay, I've just hit a bit of a stumbling block, which might actually be best. Ooh. Okay. We don't need the requesting actor, I don't think. But what we do need to check is that the request is valid. Because if there's something connected there that wants a different resource, but it's not the correct resource, it can't give it. Um, yeah, it can't give it. And the request actor doesn't make a difference because the request actor is the one that's going to be calling it. So we may not need the connected actors. Um, I'm going to leave that there for now. I'm not going to use it. Um, but what we do need to add in is... resource type requested and this is going to be our db resource no it's not it's our resource I cannot spell I never I think you probably noticed that by now um resource Oh Jesus! Resource type. There we go. E resource type. Oh no! I'm gonna have to type it in again because it didn't work. Oh, something weird when it does this. Resource type. That time it worked. So now we've got the resource type coming in. We need to do something with this first. So we need to do a compare. equal okay so our resource type against the requested resource type yeah go on why is it not connecting a resource type you know must be converted to a dynamic type before being connected okay i've never come across that one Um, e oh, this is really strange. We equal enum. Ah, oh, equal enum. Sorry. Yes, that makes sense. There we go. Slightly different way of doing things. It's uh, yeah, another one of these strange ones. So we're checking now if the resource type matches. Um, we need a new output on here and this will say is valid resource so then we can detect if it's a valid resource or not um, if we've asked for iron but the, this holds copper it's going to be an invalid resource and we also want to output resource type so we know what our original resource type is so if we come along here and move that down uh, resource type is incorrect let's click on there and that's got to be oh here we go this is gonna <laughs> e resource type oh you worked first time shocking so this is going to tell us 
we're going to send back it might not be relevant but we're going to send back what resource is actually in here yeah so then we can uh whoever's requesting the resource there might be a message of some sort it, it might not be needed but it's there okay so all of these um, are valid resources all of these code paths here are valid resources okay whether we've got any makes no difference but they're valid resources so we're going to set here um, be valid resource and it's a boolean and we're going to set this here move that across and bring that into there and these are valid resources so all of them are fine it's just oops let's bring that across a little bit tidier so but if it's not a valid resource which will be here so we want to bring out a branch node connect this in if the resource is valid it will do all the work if it's not we're going to connect this to uh, what we're going to we're going to connect this to our valid resource here we could actually just check it here <clears throat> as the valid resource but we need a co-path anyway so it makes a difference it would probably just would have saved an extra step but i don't think it's really gonna return anything so valid resource is there and it's going to come back and execute there does that look about right yeah it does let's bring that over a bit. oh that's fine let's bring this one back just a little bit there we go so also we need to plug our valid resource into there we'll just bring that down there as well just so we know what we're returning so now we've checked that what they're asking for is correct or not and return an answer if it's not we've also checked that there's a, there's more than zero in stock and if it's not we return zero we've checked that if there's more than zero in stock that we've got enough and we can send it all back and then we adjust the storage if we haven't got enough we send back what we can and adjust the storage to zero okay hope that's straightforward so what's next sorry about that my phone went off uh, what's next we need to be able to give resource so to give resources we need to do the similar checks first yeah so input resource type oh what did i use on the other one let's put resource type for now but that might conflict resource requested um mm, resource resource given for want of a better word doesn't really work for me but yeah it will for now a resource given and we need um, quantity given actually actually no maybe that does work let's uh let's put given at the beginning same here And then that will be float uh, what have we got on the take again um, the quantity we're not using the act at the moment so I'll leave that blank for now so given resources so we need to check that we're allowed to give the resource don't we and we also need to tell them how many we took so valid resource be valid resource um, 
that's a boolean and return quantity is a float okay so that's going to be is the resource valid how much are we returning yeah so just like here we need to have a return quantity and a valid resource yeah and then we plug those into there the same um whoop. so let's go back to give and on the output we're going to say valid resource and that's a bull and oh, and that's a bull and then we're going to add in our um, taken quantity and that's a float and that's a float <laughs> okay let's move that out of the way for now so let's check the given resource so we need to equal enum and it's got to be by the resource type and I will set it here actually I'm going to set this there because then it won't need to be set twice yeah and it also needs to come into there so the valid resource so there's less maths involved in this well actually no maybe there isn't <laughs> right so we checked it's the right resource type um and now we just need to branch based on that as well, don't we? Let's bring that oh, sit there, bring that into there. So now we've checked if this is false, we just go straight out. Yeah, we're not sending anything. This one, not yet. So we'll bring this one across the top for now. Bring that one across the top. So if the resource is valid have we got room in the current storage okay so now we need to check compare these values so compare float so the first compare we're going to do is the current storage against the maximum storage right if it's equal move this across if it's equal we want to set the return quantity to nothing okay so we're not we're not taking any oh actually no it's taking quantity isn't it yeah take quantity zero okay so we're taking zero because the storage is full now it can't be larger because we're going to handle that by not allowing it to go anymore so if it's the current storage is smaller than the maximum it means we've got a bit of space it might not be a lot but we've got a bit of space so bring that down there and now yeah if this is smaller we now need to see if the difference is bigger so we need to compare another value oh image against reference I'm not doing images okay compare float and we need to do some maths so we need the current storage and the maximum storage again so let's work out this and so maximum storage subtract the current storage okay so that leaves us with a value so we now want the given quantity so the input is given 
quantity. And we're checking it against how much room we've got left. Now, if the given quantity is more, we need to do a little bit of math. If it's equal, uh, we just send it taken through. So we can set so let's do equals first. So we set return quantity to given quantity. Yeah. Just move these across even more. Oh, not that one's as well, just these. So the return quantity is correct. Oops. I'll make it a right mess of this this morning. Why is it not moving? There we go. Um and then we need to adjust and if it's less um than this, we can also set the recurrent return quantity the same. Yeah. So if we've got the exact amount of space or less, we set the return quantity. Yeah. And then we've got to adjust the current storage. So the current storage we need to set to add into there and obviously the current storage there. So we're adding that value to the current storage. Okay. And that will come across again into here. So if it's less, so this has got the same amount of maths in it, actually, to be honest. If it's more than what we can take, but there is a gap, yeah? Um, what we need to do is take this value. I wonder if we should uh, set this as a... Free space. And let's, let's move all this across. We'll see. We're going to disconnect this here. Move these across. And we're going to set free space. Because we're going to have to use it again. So rather than make it really messy, we'll set the free space here. So it's these two subtracted. Okay, let's bring that back. We've set the free space and the given quantity. Oop, we've still got everything selected. It doesn't help. It goes into. There's the free space. Okay. So now we have um, the given quantity is more than the free space. So what we need to do is we need to set the return quantity to the free space yeah that's all we've got and we also want to set the storage to add the given quantity again so we want to add set the current storage which is here to Self add current storage. Okay, which we could probably do this part, this stage here. Actually, let's, let's tidy this up. So if we set, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Um, yeah, we can send that into there. Okay, so that's how much we're taking because that's how much free space we've got or we're take, given, taking the lot. And then we need to delink that and we need to add that to the uh, return quantity yeah so that means it takes into account both of these values properly because they could have been set either there or there if I come off there they'll only take this value um, and it'll probably come out as a zero so 
we'll just get this independently here to set the current storage there we go that's kind of it um that down yeah that's kind of it so let's explain this as i go along and then we can uh comment it as we go along as well so let's get these and tidy these up a little bit um let's see where could i put these i'm gonna go underneath they could Right, okay. So this one, check the request is valid resource type. Technically, we shouldn't be testing this, but I'm going to on the eventuality that something is requesting it and we don't know in the background. So it just helps cover us a little bit. Um, so this one is... Um, we have space basically that's what we're doing we're checking if we've got space is the current storage equal to the maximum storage if it is resource for take zero yeah so if it is we take zero if it's less um we Let's bring this right down a little bit and see if we can comment this. Right. Ooh, I hate it when it does that. Um, calculate fr uh, free, ooh, free space. Okay. Right. Resource full, take zero. That's fine. That goes straight across. Um, So here, let's bring this down a little bit and across. Should have really done that with all of this, shouldn't I? So what are we doing next? Um, we are comparing again, for what reason? Uh, I could do this in a single quote, so. check how much we can take so we compare how much they want to give to how much we want to take okay um so check how much we can take so we get the given quantity and compare it with the free space now if it's equal Ooh, have I done this backwards? So, say how much we can take. So, we want this, and we've got this much free space. Yeah? If it's larger... No, I've done this right. Yeah, if it's larger than... If the given quantity is larger than the free space, we take just the free space. So, we set the return quantity to the free space. If the... Yeah, so let's just put that comment in there. Um, take only what we can fit. All right, here, because we have the exact same of free space, or we have um, more free space, which is basically less quantity required than the free space, we send back take entire quantity right we'll take the entire quantity because it's free space um and then here we add given quantity to storage amount so it's all been checked it should never go over yeah and then obviously we return 
the valid quantity and we need to just add in our return quantity yeah so now we should be able to add and deduct things into this resource simple as that so now this can be added into an object and it can be used um, at the moment well, I'm going to turn off a tick on this we don't want no ticking on this oh no we haven't have we um, can we not set it by default is there not a class defaults start with the ticking we're not going to have tick enabled on there okay because it doesn't need to tick it's only going to work and do things when resources are given and taken at the moment the connected actors I'm not sure how we're going to use that it's a possibility I might not now um, but it's possibly I might but we've got everything else in there at the moment that we need yeah so at the moment we can give and we can take next episode we're going to go into the miner and adjust it and add this in and then we can use this to store how much um how much items we can store so let's go from that so on that we'll leave you to it um and we'll see you in the next episode so thank you very much and take care and goodbye for now